And these are my top tips to catch more catfish this spring. First, find the bait and you find the fish. Now this is true year round. One of the easiest ways to learn how to pattern and catch catfish is to learn how to pattern and catch bait fish, especially shad on lakes, reservoirs, and rivers where you have good populations of shad. You're always going to find fish where you find the most concentrations of bait, but this is especially true in the spring. When the fish get into a real true spring pattern, 90% of the bait is going to be in 10% of the water. So that makes it really easy to find catfish. Now in the early season, you're going to have a lot of varying patterns. When you're just going into spring, you're having real volatile weather, you're having some cold nights and some warmer days, and you're still having fronts coming through, you're going to see big changes in the patterns from day to day or sometimes even within a day. So it takes a while for those fish to transition and really get into a true spring pattern. In the early season, don't be afraid to get out, think outside the box, try some different things, go into deeper depths and experiment because that's how you're gonna have your best success finding catfish. In the late season, as the weather gets more consistent, and you don't have as much of that volatility in the weather, typically when you get into April and early May, you're gonna see less of those changes where the fish won't move around as much, there won't be as drastic adjustments to the patterns. In the late season, late March, April, early May, when the weather gets more consistent, you don't have those colder nights and you don't have as many cold fronts coming through, you're gonna see more consistency with the fishing. They won't move around as much, the patterns won't change as much, and they'll be easier to find day to day and week to week until those fish move to spawn. So once you find a pattern in middle to late spring, those fish are gonna stay in that pattern typically for a long time until they go to get on those beds and start spawning. Pay close attention to water temperatures. You're gonna see big adjustments and changes in water temperature uh, in the spring, especially in the early part of the spring where that weather is changing and the fish are still transitioning. Shallow water with muddy bottoms will warm up a whole lot quicker than any of the other water out there. So constantly be paying attention to that fish finder and watching that water temperature and looking for changes in water temp. When you find that warmer water, you're oftentimes gonna find the fish. Use fresh, natural, and native bait. Remember what I said about 90% of the fish being in 10% of the water, 90% of the bait being in 10% of the water? That is gonna tell you the bait that you need to use. Fresh, natural, native bait. Stay away from these gimmick, clickbait, uh, YouTube baits like gummy worms and chicken and all this other garbage, hot dogs, anything else, and fish with what the fish are eating. Match the hatch, use the bait that the fish are feeding on primarily, and the same size bait that those fish are feeding on primarily. In most cases, that's going to be threadfin or gizzard shad or skipjack herring. So make sure you use that fresh, natural, and native bait, and you'll catch more fish. The wind is your friend. Anytime you've got a good, strong, and consistent wind, it's always going to help with the catfishing, and the bite is going to be better. And this is especially true in the spring. A good windy day in the spring will always produce more fish than a dead calm day or a day with no wind. And if you have a big pattern change with the wind where it shifts from north to south or east to west, it's gonna take a while for those fish to get moved. So you have to really get out there and explore where the wind was blowing previously and everywhere in between until you find where those fish have moved to. But the wind is your friend. Fish hard and fish fast. This is one of the best rules I can tell you. When I pull up, and throw my lines in the water in the spring when the fish get into a true spring pattern, I usually know within five minutes or less if the fish are there. If you really wanna put fish in the boat and you're fishing for numbers, 
then don't sit in one place too long. Don't be afraid to move. Follow that 15 minute rule. If you've been sitting 15 minutes and you don't have any fish, don't have any bites, you need to move. Sometimes those can just be little moves. Sometimes they need to be big moves, but fish hard and fish fast and you'll fight, you'll catch, <clears throat> but fish hard and fish fast and you'll catch more fish. If you're fishing from a boat, side imaging is your friend and you will find more fish with side imaging than any other type of sonar in the spring. When these fish start to move and they get into shallower depths, 15 foot of water or less, up to even inches of water at times, that side imaging looking out on either side of the boat allows you to cover a whole lot more water and you'll be able to find more fish. When you get into that shallow water and you're looking on down imaging or 2D sonar, you're seeing such a small little area below the boat that it's really hard to find fish. But you can bump that side imaging range out to 75, 100 feet, sometimes even more, and you're gonna find a whole lot more fish and catch more catfish as well. Downsize baits and hooks. Now, when I'm fishing in the spring and I'm targeting numbers, I'm fishing hard, fishing fast, I like to use the six-aught Whisker Seeker triple threat hook and I downsize my baits. Either small thread fin shad or a piece of cut shad that is about the size of a quarter or a half dollar or so. Again, it just depends on what the fish are doing and what they're feeding on. But I like to use those smaller baits. Those smaller baits will catch big fish as well. And almost every single one of the big fish that I catch in the spring and that I've caught over the past 25 years as a catfish guide has been on a tiny piece of bait. Big fish will eat little baits. Now, when the fish are moving around a lot, they're not in a real good pattern that early part of the spring and they're still transitioning, you may be able to go out and catch some fish in deeper water or in mid depths or drift. You may be able to go up shallow or shallower and anchor and catch fish. So my last tip is to be versatile. Try different things, try different depths, don't be afraid to anchor and don't be afraid to drift and let the fish tell you what they want. When you're in that deep water in those mid depths and the fish are transitioning and they get really scattered, sometimes drifting or dragging planer boards is the best bet. You can do that in shallow water as well, but I typically find that when I get up in that shallower water and I really find the fish and they start to get into a pattern, I do much better fishing anchored than drift fishing. But don't be afraid to drift or anchor and try some different techniques. So that's my 10 top tips to catch more catfish this spring. Now, if you wanna learn even more and really up your game to catch more catfish, head over to catfishedge.com or the link down below in the description of this video. I'll put a link to my Spring Blue Catfish Techniques book. You can learn everything you ever wanted to know about how to locate and catch blue catfish in the spring and uh, got some other great free resources as well there at catfishedge.com again go down below leave a link uh, go down below and click on those links check that information out and i will be back on the water next week with some catfish action and it's going to be a good one until next time i'm chad ferguson catfishedge.com